C.S. Lewis delves thoroughly into the idea of how God permits pain and uses it as a warning. Human suffering begs the question of whether God can bear it, mainly when it results from the malevolent deeds of others. The significance of God's bestowed free will, which permits individuals to make their own decisions, even incorrect ones, holds the key to the solution. An essential instrument for bringing human consciousness to its genuine state is suffering. When things are going well, we often grow complacent and lose sight of God's necessity. Pain is an unavoidable indicator that something is wrong, prompting us to look for outside assistance. According to C.S. Lewis, God awakens a deaf world by using suffering as a megaphone. God's whispers are easy to ignore when we are enjoying ourselves, but when we are in agony, it is difficult to ignore Him. Pain draws us back to God and exposes the reality of our situation. Additionally, Suffering shatter the idea of independence. We frequently think we have power over our life and that our goods or accomplishments will bring us happiness. Pain makes us aware of how fleeting these illusions are and inspires us to seek for a closer relationship with God. The vices that lead to success in the world are more hazardous because they maintain this illusion of independence. God is more understanding of people who own their shortcomings and ask for assistance rather than fooling themselves into thinking they are independent. Difficulties act as litmus tests for our obedience and trust. They compel us to acknowledge our frailties and rely much more on God. Our faith is reinforced and honed by these tribulations, setting us up for a closer, more genuine relationship with the Creator. Without these challenging times, we quickly revert to our previous habits of independence and complacency. The tribulation serves as a constant reminder of our reliance on God, and the necessity of being in His presence in order to succeed. Selections from C.S. Lewis's book, The Problem of Pain. Do you recognize the cautions that God is sending your way? It is imperative that you pay attention to these heavenly signals. God tries to warn us by communicating with us in a number of ways. He gives us advice about friendships, relationships, and even careers in addition to faults. There's a good chance that you are receiving warnings from God for a cause. You could go in the wrong direction if you ignore these indicators. How do you recognize if God is warning you? Here are five ways God tries to get your attention. First, look at the fruits. Lewis states, Let me be clear. Living a Christian life is different. It's both easier and harder. Give all to me, says Christ. I am not interested in consuming an excessive amount of your time, money, or labor. You are mine. I came to kill your old natural nature, not to punish it. There will be no compromises. Give me everything that makes you you and I'll give you back myself. You will have my will. You will adopt my nature. According to what Jesus said in Matthew 7, 16, 20, you will recognize them by their fruits. Do people gather figs from thistles or grapes from thorn bushes? In the same way, all good trees bear fruit, but bad trees bear terrible fruit. Both poor and good trees are unable to produce fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit. Any tree that doesn't produce decent fruit gets chopped down and burned. You will so be able to identify them by their fruit. This text is applicable to every area of your life, including your relationships, work, and everyday routine. Negative outcomes, like persistent issues and a lack of advancement, suggest that changes are necessary. Consider this. Are the individuals in my life advancing my growth or detracting from the teachings of Christ? For instance, in relationships, Ignoring warning signs might result in a great deal of suffering and regret. Second, God convicts you. According to Lewis, a man becomes a Christian when he does what Christ did, which is to forgive the sins of others, give to the needy, visit the sick, and make sacrifices for others. Consequently, the life of a Christian is a scaled-down replica of the life of Christ. According to John 16, 8, the Holy Spirit assists us in seeing our errors, appreciating the significance of acting morally and realizing the consequences of making poor decisions. This warning usually manifests as an odd feeling that something is off. It could be a warning to avoid something negative or a sense of regret after making a mistake. It seems as though God is urging us to focus. For instance, the Holy Spirit is most likely trying to warn you if something looks off and unsettling in a friendship or at work. Don't dismiss this emotion. Pray to handle this circumstance. In your prayers, talk to God and ask for the wisdom and fortitude to make the required changes. You will have a deeper understanding of errors, justice, and the results of our deeds if you study the Bible. 
Seek guidance from a faith-aware brother who can help you view things from a different angle. Consider your actions as well. Give it some thought to see if your decisions are actually in line with what God desires. Making better decisions and comprehending God's signs can be achieved by implementing these strategies. A strong connection with God and spiritual development depends on paying attention to and appropriately handling the Holy Spirit's warnings. Third, God can speak to you directly or through other people. It is the church itself, not this or that denomination, but the body of Christ as a whole that Christ naturally instructs us to think about and love, according to Lewis. He conveyed his message through the prophets, the apostles, and the saints. This film can be a warning to you to turn from your sins or make a change in your life. God frequently conveys his messages through other individuals. It could come from a sermon, a discussion with a friend, or even an unfamiliar person. Recall the narrative of David found in 2 Samuel 12, 1 to 7. Nathan was sent by the Lord to David. He told him, There were two men in a certain town, one rich and the other poor, when he arrived. The impoverished man owned nothing but a single small ewe lamb that he had purchased, whereas the affluent man possessed an enormous number of sheep and cattle. It grew up with him and his kids after he raised it. It was like a daughter to him. It slept in his arms, shared his food, and drank from his cup. A tourist now approached the wealthy guy, but he declined to offer the stranger a meal by giving up one of his own sheep or cattle. Rather, he prepared the ewe lamb that belonged to the impoverished man for the person who had approached him. As surely as the Lord lives, the man who did this must die, David yelled at the man, his rage burning in his throat. He did that and showed no remorse, thus he has to pay for that lamb four times over. David was then told by Nathan, You are the man. Before a prophet gave David a tale that paralleled his own deeds, David believed he had atoned for his transgression. This tale demonstrates how we can occasionally become so preoccupied with our own issues that we fail to recognize our own errors. Then, God sends someone to prod us, to warn us, and that's when we have to stop and pay attention. God may use anyone to communicate to us, therefore it's critical to keep an open mind and listen to others. Perhaps it's timely advice or criticism that causes us to pause and reflect. By listening to these folks, we too can develop and learn, just like David did. Not only that, but we have the ability to speak for God in other people's lives as well. We may assist others see things they might not notice themselves if we have the confidence and love to do so. This benefits the individual as well as our own development. David's narrative serves as a reminder that although mistakes are inevitable, there is always opportunity for improvement and pardoning. These shifts frequently begin when someone has the guts to tell it like it is, even when it is difficult. Fourth, God can put you through trials and tribulations. According to Lewis, we cannot in this sense discover our failure to uphold God's law unless we make a valiant effort and ultimately fall short. No matter how hard we try, the thought that we can achieve perfection the next time by working even harder will constantly nag at the back of our thoughts. So, in a way, the path back to God is a path of moral diligence, of making ever-increasing attempts. In a different sense, though, trying won't get us home. The crucial time arrives when you turn to God and say, you must do this. All of your trying has led up to this point. I am unable to. Hebrews 12, 5, 7, 11 says, Have you forgotten this word of encouragement that comes to you in the same way that a father speaks to his son? My son, do not despise the Lord's chastisement, and do not become discouraged when he chastises you. For the Lord chastises whomever he accepts as his son, and he disciplines the one he loves. Accept adversity as a form of discipline. You are being treated as God's children. For what reason does a father not punish his children? Discipline is painful at first, but it never feels nice. But later on, for those who have been taught by it, it yields a harvest of righteousness and peace. Recall Moses and Pharaoh. Even though God warned Pharaoh and forced him to repent via a number of plagues, Pharaoh's heart grew harsher. Just like a father corrects his son, God uses trials to discipline those he loves, guiding them in the proper direction. It's a good idea to pause when things are difficult in life and ask God what lesson he wants you to learn from them. We may use these trying times to grow as people and to reinforce our beliefs. For instance, if you are experiencing difficulties at work or at home, 
it can be God's way of attempting to teach you something significant. Seek clarification from God and make an effort to comprehend the reason behind these challenges. Speaking with friends or religious leaders who can provide you with guidance and help you view things differently can also be beneficial. View these difficulties as chances to develop and get better. Recall that when times are difficult, it is not because God has forgotten you. Rather, it is because He cares about you and wants the best for you, enabling you to grow into a more resilient and upright person. Fifth, God warns through dreams and visions. Lewis explains that imagination, working through strong faith, allows us to be receptive to visions of a greater and more divine reality. God uses these glimpses of eternity, whether they come to us in the form of dreams, visions, or strong intuitions, to convey His will and lead us on our spiritual path. Joel 2.28 states, And I will pour out my Spirit on all mankind after that. Your young men will see visions, your old men will dream dreams, and your sons and daughters will prophesy. Dreams and visions are significant ways that God speaks to us. If you have a dream that feels important, try to interpret it by writing it down and praying about it. In the Bible, dreams are how God communicates with Joseph and Daniel. Ask God in prayer if a dream you have seems to be more than simply a regular dream, if it's a warning or a revelation. Knowing whether a dream is indeed from God or if it could be a diversion or trick is crucial. Compare what the Bible says with your dreams to accomplish this. Understanding the dreams God provides us requires consulting the Bible for help. Examine the texts, give them some thought, and seek God's guidance regarding the dreams. God would never give you a message that conflicts with the Bible. Therefore, always make sure the meaning of your dreams is in line with what the Bible says. Visions and dreams can be potent indications from God. To fully grasp their significance, pay close attention to them, but also exercise caution and seek God's guidance at all times. God warns us that disobeying Him can lead to heartache and wandering from His path. It's critical to keep in mind that God corrects people He loves. Thus, pay attention to these indicators. Consider the effects of your deeds. Sense the Holy Spirit's presence, hear His voice, confront your obstacles, and interpret your dreams. God uses signs to guard you and lead you to live a life that brings Him honor. Pay attention to the cues He puts in your path. Accept them as tokens of affection and wisdom from a loving Father. Pay attention to who is around you. Do they draw you away from Christ or closer to Him? Think back on your interpersonal relationships. Don't discount your convictions if you have them. Consider it carefully and ask God for direction. He desires to keep you safe and lead you toward what is best for you. When you face challenges, keep in mind that He is developing your faith and your character. Throughout this process, have faith in Him. Strive for a closer relationship with God in everything. Take some time to study God's Word and pray. Allow Him to light your way and direct your feet. We kindly request that you forward this heartfelt and blessings-filled video to others who might benefit from its message of love and optimism. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation, he commanded them. Mark 16, 15. We are carrying out the will of God and illuminating lives that require consolation and direction by sharing the gospel. By spreading this message and enabling others to feel the joy and serenity that come from knowing our Savior, let us serve as conduits of God's love. As we obey the Lord's call, let us spread the good news to every part of the globe with hearts full of love and thankfulness. Here are the five ways God warns us. By the fruits, by conviction, through other people, through trials, and through dreams. Make sure to be attentive to these signs and act accordingly. God loves you and wants the best for you. Stay alert and be blessed. We're going to be praying now, so please join us. We may all strive to improve daily in order to fulfill our Lord's expectations, as I always prefer to elevate our words to God with a heartfelt request. Please God, I am anxious to hear from you and stand before you with an open heart. Father, I am aware of your love and constant guidance for us. I pray to you today for the ability to discern your signals and to act in faith and obedience when I see them. Lord, please help me to see the results of my relationships in life. Please help me to distinguish between right and wrong walk the route that leads to fruitful outcomes, and avoid anything that might draw me away from you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being there for me always. You convict me of my sins and lead me to righteousness. Please open my heart to your conviction 
so that I might respond in humility and repentance. I pray that I will never overlook your soft voice guiding me back to the correct course. Dear Father, you frequently speak to us through the individuals in our immediate vicinity. Please open my eyes and ears so I can detect when you are using someone else to spread your word. May I possess the humility to listen intently, take errors, and advise. Please assist me to keep in mind that you punish those you love during difficult times. Give me the bravery and fortitude to face obstacles, understanding that they are fortifying my faith and forming my character. May I completely rely on you in trying times, knowing that you are by my side. Lord, I am also aware that you communicate with me via dreams and visions. I pray for clarity so I can make sense of the dreams you give me. May I constantly look to your word for confirmation and turn to you in prayer so that your truth will lead me and I won't be misled. Father, I beseech you to use this prayer as a potent means of communication. May your love and presence be felt by everyone who hears your message and heeds these instructions. Grant us discernment, wisdom, and a willingness to follow you in everything. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I want to express my gratitude to everyone who joined us in prayer after watching this video. Godspeed to you and your loved ones.